Hello everybody. I haven't vlogged in a little while. I'm headed to VidCon really soon. I'm giving a presentation on management 101 for creators. How to be a manager. I'll see you there. Come to VidCon. Today I want to talk about creativity and systems. I have four stories that I want to tell. Very quick stories, examples of the intersection of creativity and systems. I've been wondering if creativity and systems mutually exclusive, right? You think of creativity as being outside of the box, right? When people talk about creativity, they say, think different, right? Or like, do something that's never been done before. Is that compatible with systems? Like, can you build a, can you build a repeatable procedure for generating creativity? Is that, is that paradox? Is that a paradox? Can you build systemic creativity? So I've been thinking about this a lot. I've been thinking about like four stories around the intersection of systems and creativity. The first is Elliot Smith, who's one of my favorite guitar players and singer-songwriters ever. There was an interview that I saw with him once that sort of like changed how I approach music. He was like, there's all these great chords, like Bach identified all these cool patterns, like music theory, Western music theory is basically math. Like you can, you can build harmonic progressions. And he said like, you don't want to ignore that. Like, why would you ignore like all these great things that work? It's just, Every once in a while, you want to fuck it up a little bit. <laughs> and then he throws in like this weird chord as he's talking on this. You're like, oh my God. So most of the time you like, it feels natural and normal. And then every once in a while he puts in this chord. It's like, where the hell did that come from? And like, that's creativity to me. Okay. Another story along those same lines. Natalie's bass teacher talked about the importance of bass lines that go in and out. This is something I've noticed in Brad Meldow's music. He'll play some line. Brad Meldow's one of my favorite piano players. He plays this line and you're like, what is that line doing? And then he like finishes the line with like a blues scale, which is like, that's been around for like a hundred years, feels really normal, but he kind of slips into the blues scale. So he, he goes out of the blues scale and does some weird thing and then slips back into the blues scale and finishes with like a really familiar, deeply resonant like blues riff. And Brad does this in a lot of his music, and that's what Natalie's bass teacher was talking about. Stay in with your bass lines, and every once in a while go out and do something crazy and then come back in. Okay, another story. Um, there was this, I went to a conference this weekend. There was this wonderful lady named, um, oh shoot, I'll figure out her name later. She's amazing. She did algorithmic art. It was like game engines kind of. She would program physics rules into a world, but really weird rules, but they were still rules. So she programmed like a type of resonant pattern for flowers. Like when wind blows over a flower, like instead of a flower going like that, the flower would like do this weird wavy curvy thing. It looked like a rule. It was a rule. I mean, it was mathematical, but it was also a rule that we had never heard of or seen before. So it was, she, she said that's the definition of science fiction. It's a rule, so it's following a rule, but it's a rule that's never existed. And to me, that's the essence of creativity. Again, it's an intersection of what is a system and what is creativity and are they mutually exclusive? And no, you kind of need both. Last story. Patreon, we had a board meeting. Dick Costello, who's on our board, said that his favorite meeting was when they'd get a bunch of managers in the room and they'd say, what have we learned in the last six months that's been really important? What have we learned that's been really important and why did it take us so long to learn this? And the answer was always, well, because there was a widely health, held belief in the company that the answer was something else. There was a system in place that something else was right and they had to break that system. They had to break that pattern. They had to break that rule in order to be creative and learn something new and learn something that was the truth. But again, this is the yin and yang of creativity. You need the system. You need the framework and the structure to go out. If you can't go out of something, then it just feels random and lame. The, the system allows you to go out, which allows you to be creative. Maybe my thesis after all of this is that you need systems to be creative. You need creativity in systems, otherwise you stagnate. And they kind of have this yin-yang relationship with each other. Repeatable procedure and breaking procedure. It's very important to think about the balance of those two things when you're trying to be creative and when you're trying to build systems. Okay, goodbye, I'll see you at VidCon.